So as you prepare yourself to receive this message from Cryon, just come into a quiet place in your body. And feel the love of the family around you, each one of you contributing to the whole as though we were this beautiful human tapestry weaving together our energies, our experiences, our lives, this one and others that interconnect us so beautifully that even if there are people here you don't know from this life, more than likely there are other connections, other times, other lives. And you, like strands of light, interweaving warp and woof. Your energies above and below you, the work that you do, contributing to the consciousness of the planet. Whatever brought you here, whatever you've received, whatever you take with you, whatever love and connection you feel from Cryon, from those of us in the team, know that you take it into the world and the world becomes different because of you. And you become different because of that. Your love, your light, and your compassion reaches out, reaches in, and makes a beautiful difference. Greeting, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I know where I am. Through my partner, I know where I am. It's not a mystery to spirit what you do. I want to start by saying to you that not all channels are long ones. I have profound information this evening to deliver. My partner has not delivered it this way. The information has never been given publicly. And it's confusing. These channels should not be that long to present an aspect that you should think about. And it's time you knew something. It's beautiful. The revelation of what I'm going to give you will not change what you do next except in appreciation of who you are. There is a grand plan here. Dear human being, the longer you live and listen to these words from various sources from the other side of the veil, the more you will realize the humanity was designed for this moment, that you have purpose, that there is love. In a free choice society and civilization, you must be left alone. When it comes to consciousness, you must be left alone to decide. It creates a barrier which you have called the other side of the veil it's a barrier of isolation. We've talked about it forever. How we would love to just reach through the barrier. Turn on the lights. You all go home. There's no test. And you revert to source. You are the worker. It's become called a light worker. Because you are changing this 
planet. The consciousness, the ahas, the awareness, all of that individually is starting to make a difference. This planet, if you watch your news, appears to be in trouble. It's not the first time. Change does this, and we have told you this. We will reiterate this. The first thing you must do at this juncture is to take care of yourself. And if that means turning off the news, do it. So you will have within you the understanding, the aha, the realization that what I am telling you is accurate and true. Purpose, love, compassion, change. This is what's happening on the planet. The news will come and go, and those who are creating problems in the world will come and go. We have told you that light is starting to make a difference over dark, and the dark is reacting. Simple. That's why you have what you have. And the more you work the puzzle, the more you'll see that light will be winning. The dark will react and continue to react in survival to save itself. I want to tell you, dear human beings, this is good news. <laughs> in general, those who will not evolve and advance will disappear. There'll come a time when the road is clear. And those who are making the problems that you have now will diminish through attrition, through birth and death, through time, you will come out of this. But that's not what I want to tell you, because this is old news. I want to give you a revelation of the evolution on the planet. And I'm talking about basic evolution. Now, my partner heard this one time. A private time that I gave him with Dr. Todd Ubekaitis. It is often Todd who gets to hear the information first. And the reason for this is this is the master teacher of energy on the planet at the moment. Once it was delivered, now you can hear it. Some of you will say, well, this is not really that big of a news. It is. It will change every biologist on the planet. <laughs> Listen. There has been a revelation just recently in a channel that I gave you called the physics of consciousness. It was a premise that was new. The premise says this, that consciousness is actually an energy that is measurable and has rules. And you get into the, the area that has been so esoteric in physics and in metaphysics that said, what is the relationship to reality and consciousness? Does physics just operate by itself and the human beings are in the bed of that operation, or do they interact? Does one affect the other? Does nature itself have a secret? Oh, it does. And it's one that you can look at with statistics for proof. As science becomes more mature and the computers that measure that which you would call chance come online with their power, let them crank through this problem. <laughs> and it'll prove that there is an attribute of truth to what I'm telling you. Consciousness is energy. Now, I want you to drop down for a moment. What if there was also energy in cellular groups? 
not brain, but intelligence that happens within groups of cells that are evolving and not necessarily just human ones? What if there is an attribute no one has talked about? You could name it, cellular awareness, if you wish. It has many names. You've never heard of it until now. There's a famous physics experiment that my partner has, has shown you over and over that proves there is energy in simple things that the universe itself reacts to. The physics experiment that said that, that by observing something, you change its reality is known in physics. It has many names. There are many ways. A human observing something can change the attribute of the something. That is what we're talking about. Is it possible that there are other energies in life. There's a famous scientist. And some of you have heard his name. His name is Michael Denton. He had the audacity to challenge Darwin's theory. This is a theory that is accepted today the way everything evolved. Life on the planet up into and including the humanoid, even before the seed biology was changed from the Pleiadian. How did you get here? Did you ever look at yourself and say, this is an amazing structure? How ever? Could it have gotten this good, this complex, with this structure in such a short amount of time? It's a good question. <laughs> now you have the computers and the ability to program life. How long should it have taken? Now Darwin said that the evolution of all life and humans happened through not just a selection of the species, but through mutation and accident. Life would crank along, doing what it always did in its form, until a mutant appeared, through chance. How many times do you reproduce until a mutant appears? And that mutant happened to do something better because it was an abnormality, an anomaly, different. And then according to Darwin, because it did something better, it had precedence over everything else. And more than, more mutants would be born. More abnormalities would come online. That's what a mutant is. That would then drive the next mutant series by accident. And the species would improve itself by accident <laughs> through mutants. Every time a creature was born who had a better set of something, whether it was the ability of mobility or intelligence, that would be the king and would be then emulated and others would come online by accident. And then those with the supercomputers started to question it. And they said, we know the statistics of mutancy. Because life still exists. We can test it. We can program it. Dear computer, how long would it take in order to evolve the human being the way it is today from the life that we know on the planet from the cellular structures that crawled out of the ocean, how long would it take? Dear computer, give us the answer. And when it did, they stood back and gasped. 
because it would have been so long. You would not even be here as a multi-celled animal. Nothing. And that's not what happened, did it, dear one? As long as life took, and you'd think it was a long time, was super fast compared to what the computer said it would have taken with Darwin's process. Are you understanding this? Something else happened. In order to get you to where you are, to develop on this planet into what you are, from the way it began, there had to be interference. Ask Michael Denton, the scientist, and one who would not be caught in this room <laughs> listening to the esoterics of today, what he thinks. Ask him. And he will tell you there had to be interference in order for life to have developed this quickly on the planet. He gave it a name. Intelligent design. That's a scientific name. Do you like it? He was right. Now the scientist within him is not going to necessarily believe what comes next. He saw the effect. The computers don't lie. And the intelligence of the processing and the maturity of your brains today must take a look at this. Because now you'll know you're designed, dear ones, to be here. There was a fast, fast track system. And one that I still cannot give you totally and completely because there are processes within processes regarding cellular structure and how it works that my partner cannot deliver without the knowledge he does not have. So I'm going to give it to him very simply. There is a benevolence of God on this planet that imbues itself in all things. You studied it today as the Gaia grid called Mother Nature. And my partner did not know this. He did not teach it. But Mother Nature itself, not completely natural, as he said, because those that seeded you, who were here at the very beginning, helped to create this. Imagine a planet that had accelerated growth on purpose, a benevolent design that would bring about the humanoid faster than any statistical program could say was accurate. The chances that you would have evolved naturally in the process that Darwin has given you and you've accepted are astronomically out of whack. <laughs> Couldn't happen. You must look at this to even begin to think I'm right. Cellular structure has benevolent intelligence. The best we can give you. There's a field that exists around life, all life. It was enhanced and designed especially by those who helped put this planet in place. And dear ones, part of that was you. This planet evolved faster than anything possible. Much faster. Again, I turn to that which you know to tell you what you don't know so that you will help understand and believe what you're going to learn. The statistics will prove I'm right. It won't prove that this is the answer. It'll simply tell you that there was something that interfered with natural selection, which is an ax actually an oxymoron. There was nothing natural about it, dear one. You were pushed into existence. Cellular structure has benevolent intelligence. 
There were no accidental mutants. Cellular structure built the next best thing as fast as it could. Because it knew what was coming. This planet's life evolved with interference through intelligence, through nature that was benevolent and interfered. That's the best I can give you. To tell you that the evolving human being was designed. There is no accident you're here. And if you want to look at the statistics, that's just one more point to connect the dots that maybe there's a purpose for this planet. Maybe there's a purpose for the human being who is here, not by accident, but designed on purpose with a consciousness of God. This is a different planet. And when you can see how life should have developed and you are able to look at other planets someday that have any kind of microbial life, any kind of animal life, you will see a vast difference in the timeline. Vast. Couldn't have happened. Your scientists will scratch their heads and they will agree. We don't know what it is. We don't know how. But there was interference. Big time. You developed in a fraction of the time it should have taken natural selection. And what does it mean to you? Because that's the message of the day. I want you to sit on this knowing that there is now evidence so I can give it to you. Do you understand the way this works, dear ones, the way channeling happens? We cannot simply blast out truth that you haven't thought about yourself. You must discover it and ask the questions before we can answer them. Free choice is honored, blessed, beautiful, and you're starting to ask the questions. And we gave you the source to look at. What does it mean to you? As we close, what does this mean to you? What if <laughs> the design of humanity was from God? Benevolent, beautiful, outside of the possibility of chance, would you think differently about everything we've been saying? Maybe you're here on purpose. And if so, dear ones, what else might be on purpose? What's going on right now that you're having to deal with? If the benevolent force of the Creator could create life for you on this planet in a fraction of the time, don't you think maybe it can help you solve some problems. <laughs> this is a different energy, different information. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Evolution is at hand, and now it gets good. For as human nature starts to mature and get out of the playground, as you start to see one another country to country, sacred group to sacred group, and stop throwing rocks at each other and calling each other names as you've done for so long, as you mature and see the commonality that you have, you can hold hands and sing the praise of the benevolent God, one God, in so many forms, in so many truths, who has one thing in common with all, love, compassion. And that is the truth. It's going to change the world. Not quickly, but it will. You stand at the cusp of the change the beginning of processes that we haven't ever discussed. Listen, scientists, if you are listening and you're rolling your eyes, go do the math and come back. 
You give your explanation. Someday in the test tube, you'll see it. A field around cells in general that has an intelligence you never thought was there. Without a brain, without a central system, there's still something there. Multidimensional, of course. Quantum, a little. Go find it. Beautiful.